climate change is a factor and it's a factor that's growing and it's a factor that's becoming more important in people's decisions to migrate. Climate change and migration is difficult to link because migration and mobility in general is multi-causal. There are many reasons why somebody might be on the move. There's social, political, economic, environmental, and demographic drivers of migration. And that goes for any kind of migration. But climate change affects all of those factors. So it doesn't happen alone. It acts as what we call a, a threat multiplier. When I was working in uh, Senegal initially, the first time I went, I did about 40 interviews with, with people and only one of them ever said the words climate change. There's this underlying assumption that everybody knows exactly what's happening to their environment. That everybody is, first of all, aware of climate change. That's not true. We just published recently uh, a research we did in Burkina Faso. And the research was about the way people would perceive the impacts of climate change. The people were under the impression that it was raining less, whereas actually it had rained more in the past few years. And obviously people make their decision on the way they perceive environmental changes, not on the environmental changes themselves. When your job and your life and your culture are so attached to what happens in the environment, you might be very aware of the impacts, but you don't know necessarily what the cause of that is, or you don't know that, um, if it's reversible, is that something that we can change? If you think, oh, this is permanent, or that, wow, my community is going to disappear, you start thinking about mobility in a different way. A lot of times people think of it as a big movement from the global south to the global north. But what we know is that the vast majority of environmental migration and displacement are occurring within the borders of countries. So you have internal displacement being much more significant than cross-border or long-distance migration. The part of the world where most people are displaced by disasters, that's South and Southeast Asia. And there are different reasons for that. The first reason is because South and Southeast Asia is the most densely populated region in the world. So there are more people there. So obviously when a disaster hits, there are also more people who are being displaced. And it is also the region that is the most hit by disasters. We also see disasters happening in the global north. One needs to remember the wildfires in California uh, or in Australia. And those fires obviously also displaced thousands of people. The difference is that these disasters displace less people in the global north because um, industrialized countries typically have some kind of infrastructure to protect their population against these disasters and such infrastructure is often lacking in the global south. Most of public debates in Europe are focused on migration from sub-Saharan Africa to Europe. In sub-Saharan Africa about half of the families depend on subsistence agriculture as their primary livelihood, which means that even for a slight change in the temperature or in the rainfall, the livelihood of half of the population in sub-Saharan Africa is compromised, which is the reason why so many need to look for an alternative livelihood in cities to work in another job and to send back a part of their salary to their families. And when some of those make it to the coast of Europe, we call them economic migrants. But as a matter of fact, it's a very Western view to distinguish between economic and environmental drivers of migration. For the people who depend on agriculture for their livelihood, the environmental factors and the economic factors are exactly the same. For you and me, our paycheck at the end of the month does not depend on the weather. For most people on this planet, it does, and we need to realize that. Mm -hmm.